Day two of the tidy up. It's showing just about 10 degrees in here and it doesn't feel particularly cold, which is quite nice. Um, but it's it's still continued to do nothing but rain. It's absolutely been just siling down all morning. So it's about, I think it's about one-ish now, one in the afternoon. So I've got a little bit of time to get the shed opened up and get some stuff chucked out because we've got a bit of a break in it. I don't know for how long, but I'll get some things out of the shed and I'm going to try and make a good effort to get that tidied today as best as I can. <laughs> it still smells like fennel when I open the door though from this that's drying here which is uh, that's quite nice actually that but yeah fresh load of cardboard we brought up to you know do something with um quite a big pile though I that might have to I might have to slide that in the greenhouse just to keep it out of the way for now and keep it dry because I'm just not 100% sure where that's going to go probably under that that next bed that's going to go there where those raspberries are that'll want lining in some cardboard so there'll be plenty I can squash into that when that gets made uh, but yeah all these shelves need reorganising I've got some kind of like soil amendment fertiliser bits I haven't got loads of stuff but there's some stuff there my little medical box uh, tea and coffee fire lighting stuff um, various painty things um, just you know like that the stuff that you have where it's uncategorized so it just kind of ends up kicking about or shoved in a drawer you know that kind of thing i've got to i've got to sort that out but i did bring up my little boxes i got the other day though so hopefully they're going to help tidy quite a lot of this and the rest of it's not so bad you know there's loads of bags bags inside of bags inside of bags um my little baby bath hiding down here that i wanted to make the pond at the back of the shed out of uh few empty bits of bottles that I can put some of the comfy tea in when I deal with that. Uh, tools and bits, these aren't too bad round here actually, I can just sort of put those back into order and they're not so bad, they're all kind of, they've got homes already and screws and fitments and stuff. So to be fair I don't think it's too bad, I think it's mostly going to be sort of working out all these little bits of stuff and what goes with what and getting them put into tubs that sort of make sense really but first things first I've got to get at it haven't I so I'll shift a few bits in the greenhouse and just make space to slide all this cardboard out of the way for the time being that mood. Oh. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <sighs> right, 
most of the cardboard's out. I think it was a little bit too much to uh, assume that there was nothing hiding under there apart from uh, clear floor, but no, look, loads of rubbish. Uh, well, it's not all rubbish, it's all useful stuff, isn't it? So I'm going to have to make a start on this now, but I'll get the barrow out of the way. I stuck myself from walking into these bits because that's they're like magnetic to my legs are these. And it hurts. trying to overwinter these but looking at them I think it's going to be another fail I mean there's some blackening on those branches as if it's already mouldering um, and I mean it, it it'd have been a bit protected in here but it it would have still been really really cold so these might also be a fail uh, what have I got there jalapeno and two two jalapenos there uh, so I might have to just start those from fresh next year again but I mean never mind I mean you could keep 10 chilies over winter and you might get one through if you're lucky or at least that's my experience of it they are a little bit difficult to do uh, or I find they are it might just be me um, but yeah I think these may well be gone but I'll put them in the greenhouse for now because I need them out of the way while I get everything else cleared out up stuff eh should we have a box for that i don't know what size let's crack into this though let's crack into a box of stuff box of nothing <laughs> little they're almost like a cable tie but they are a proper gardening one and funnily enough i dug these up these were already here on the plot the plot gift and i, I literally dug them up out of the ground in a big bundle so um it's great i mean they work perfectly well they're all right so keeping those and i've been using for all sorts of stuff especially for tying the tops of the compost bags where i've got the mare's tail that's um kind of going to silage got stuff falling over down there uh yeah so they're good for doing up bags particularly um but i'm thinking they're same category really aren't they do i need a bigger tub now <laughs> that's just it isn't it until you found everything that's of the same sort of category you don't know what kind of storage you need it's a bit i just find it a bit overwhelming <laughs> uh i'm looking around thinking is there, there must be more string somewhere Do these fall under the same category? You know, the little staple things for the nets? Are they? But what category are these though? You know, if they're not tying things. What are they? I've got my coffee. Mmm. Found some saved sweet peas in a little bag. Um, and I, I don't know what they are. 
do I act? They're from here. Uh, so they're either, well, there's, there's three they could be, I think. Um, they're either Royal Wedding, a white one, or the High Scent, which is um, a bit of a soft sort of pink with a little bit of a purpley tinge to it. Really, I mean, the name kind of gives it away. Really lovely perfume. You can tell the difference between that and other ones. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they are, do I? So I think what I'm going to do is, when it gets round to um, springtime, maybe like April, something like that, I think I'm going to plant them at the back where the little wilderness is and just see if they'll germinate and climb the little sort of bushy tree thing that I still, I still don't know what it is, I've still not looked it up. Um, and they can climb through that if they want to and if they don't want to and they die then they do, don't they? But I don't know what they are. I mean, either way, it'll be nice if they come up. It don't really matter what type they are, unless they're the third type, which was a little sort of fuchsia pink coloured little mini one, a right tiny one, because, I mean, that's not going to have much effect, is it? It's just going to be sort of like in bottom part at trunk and no one's going to see anything. But we'll see. I mean, while they're there and I don't know what they are, I can stick them out, can't I, at some point? If I remember and if I don't lose them in the meantime. Facelia. A little bit more facelia. I might need to bring up a little tub that is just for rogue seeds that I end up leaving up here as well. Yeah, this... There's that Rudbeckia there that I went to winter sow, that one to... And I might have done, but I can't remember if I did or I didn't. Um, I'll just put them in there for now, because that needs to go back in greenhouse anyway, those lids. I've got myself a little rogue screw container temporarily. And a little rogue nail one as well. But I think big tubs going to have to be for plumbing stuff, because there are some sizeable bits of stuff. Right gather thing for a water butt. Uh, I've got a few little odds and sods of bits of you know pipes and fittings for water butts as well which makes a funny size that oh that's actually that's sized for the greenhouse is that so we're keeping that even you know little odds and sods like that because you never know what route your path's gonna your pipe's gonna take and you might need some small sections tappy things beer drinker and you have like cans of guinness or something like that that's got the widgets in in the cans um if you melt yourself or drill however you can manage to do it drill a little hole like that you can stick them on the top of your canes as anti-eye poker outers so there's a few of those floating around i know there were some from yesterday that ended up in the greenhouse so i could do with finding a little tub just for those because they're always really handy those when you've got canes tiny tub Right, tiny tub. Tiny thing. Um, there. We keep wondering where that's gone at home. I'm going, is it at the plot? No, it's not at the plot. I've looked. Is it at home? No, I've looked. And I'm glad those guys that broke in didn't get that. <clears throat> Got just a few little clout nails in this rusty little box of random stuff. Um, they were for doing the shed roof when I refelted it and I don't think I'll need any of them for quite a while but it's one of them isn't it where you think oh if I'd have just had one of them I could have done this job and then you know you can't finish stuff I mean I can't think of anything off the top of my head but you know what it's like don't you so I want to keep them but again it's like I need a microscopic tub for those just to keep them separate <sighs> so I'm going to put them in this little lid jam jar lid for now just so I can see them and then anything that doesn't have a home at the end of the day, I might have to maybe make a note of little things that I need to find for these. Look at that one, he's, he's not so good, is he? Look at that quality. 
What? What are you going to do with that? I think that can go in the bin. Holy drill bit thing. Very old one. Bent tent pegs, everybody wants one of them. Thing. Bolt with a hex thingy on. I mean, when am I going to use that? I don't know. Hmm. That, come to think about it. I think that's part of the toolkit out of the uh, my van van, one of my little motorbikes. Just thinking about that. I think that needs taking home. I'm sure that I'm sure it is. It's a motorbike, little screwdriver out of my onboard toolkit. That I think that shouldn't be up here. Uh, that pocket for now, pocket. just share with you a little tip because while I've been cleaning up and sorting out a box of random bits out I've just found these little plastic cocktail sticks and what I use these for is when you're doing your seedlings if you've got a tray that's got it might be a really really small tray with lots of different varieties in such as you know if you've got a few little tiny rows of chili seedlings that you're starting off all in one small tray instead of writing a label for every single one and putting them in where it can be quite a big label for the tiny little tray that you might have just to start them off sometimes i'll use these and i'll color code it instead so i'll know that the tub's got chilies in it but in my little diary that i, do, I use for when i do all my seedlings i might write down that you know red one is jalapeno green one ones trinidad perfume you know whatever something like that and then i've got an idea and because i've got quite a few of these as well in a big tub when i then pop them up into individual tubs again i know that they're all the chilies but i will put more of you know whatever the red one was i'll put a red one in every single one and then i could just need to look in my book at a glance of cart i might not remember what they are and i've got it's not obviously written on but i can just look back in my book and it gets you into a good habit of using your book as well because you kind of have to but then i can see what i've got and they only have to have a little stick put in them it might start getting a little bit confusing if you start labelling too many things up with these. But, you know, if you use them for your tomatoes and you use them for your chillies, when you've got the leaves coming through, you're going to know. You're going to know which is chillies and tomatoes, aren't you? And then you just look at whatever columns, tomatoes and chillies for your, your stick colour. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you go out and buy any of these plastic ones. I mean, I've just had them for ages, so... I decided that it'd be quite a good use for them and like I say they've been chucked in a tub and I found them eventually so you know I can reuse these now again um, but if you like that idea then I mean you could make some if you've got some wooden cocktail sticks or skewers or I mean anything I suppose really you just want something where you can kind of colour code it and then keep it in your little book instead so I'll be putting these with me little seed labels because I've been making a little pile of them as well here they are uh, so I'll go and pop those in the greenhouse with the other ones I mean, I know it's a bit boring, this, isn't it? You know, just sorting out tubs of screws into piles and stuff, but this is the whole reason why things sort of fall down as far as organising the shed goes. It's because I do have all these little things, and it's like they all need a little home. And organising many, many things like that is, I just find it really quite difficult to do. It's like that saying, isn't it? Look after the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. And it's it's true. It's like you really need to put more effort into organising the tiny stuff. And then it's to hand and you know where everything is and you can grab what you want when you need it and, and put it all away neatly as well. The big stuff don't really matter, you know, like all the tools and bits of stuff like that. And to a certain degree, plant pots as well in the greenhouse. I mean, those got sorted out yesterday and they're all in nice stacks now so I can see what I've got there. Uh, but yeah. Big stuff, fine, you know, you can give it a home quite easily. But it's the little pratting stuff, isn't it? <laughs> That's what's the problem. Um, but I'm making a dint in it now, I'm sort of getting there, getting through it a little bit better. Oh, I've got another tub of random stuff. Uh, anyway, carry on. 
I found the real tub for the galvanised nails. So exciting. Crack it open. Oh, oof, God. Oh, the drama. <clears throat> These nails are too long, if I'm confessing all. Um, and they slightly came through the roof. Come on, I'll show you. I'll show you. All them. Oopsie. Naughty, naughty. All came through roof. Oops. Yeah, never mind. I wish I'd have spotted that. I wish I'd have put a couple in and then come and had a look, but I climbed up on roof, so I just cracked on and got it all done, and then later on I was like, oh. Yep. <laughs> and what's extra annoying is it is it's wet. Oh dear. I mean, where, where that fell on the roof overlaps, I might have the leftover bit to show you. I painted on some, like, bitumen paint stuff. This guy here. Um, no left, pretty much. Probably needs chucking away. It's probably gone solid, but bitumen roof felt adhesive so put him back um I'm trying to think what i did now i think where the top of the felt was the top of the roll the strip and where it overlapped because i were on my own when i did this um and the way that i got the straight lines was i stapled a piece of string to one side of the roof uh, measured down the height that I wanted it from the top and then I threw the piece of string to the other side went round measured the same depth stapled it on there so I had a straight line and then that's where the uh, felt was going to overlap and on that bit I painted on quite a thick strip of bitumen this stuff just thinking that that'll help it stay put because you know I'm on my own I've got, I haven't got another pair of hands to sort of steady it and whatnot and I used a tiny little roller which it, that's here oh it's up here I mean, not, I could probably imagine, but if it's there, I'll show you where uh, it's still got a little bit stuck to it. And I use this tiny little, it's like a, I think it's a wallpaper edge roller. And I rolled it all down with that to make sure it were touching it really, really well and sticking. Um, and then through that, I put these nails that have come through the roof. But what's meant to happen on the roof in felt is when you put the, the nail through, it's meant to, because it's quite gummy stuff, it's meant to sort of seal around it and not let any water through. And with this extra bitumen, when I saw that it come through the roof, I thought, I think that's going to be all right, though, because of, you know, the, the paint and the fact that it's meant to sort of make a bit of a seal around the uh, each of the nails. But something's going on, isn't it? Oh, it might just be one of them. It might just be one of them things where it's always a, a weak point. And, I mean, we've had a lot of rain recently. It's been ridiculous. It's like send out the ark kind of thing, the amount of rain. And it might just be that it drives under a little bit, perhaps, and maybe it shows it. Because it's not, it's not like it's leaking, leaking. But, I mean, it's not going to do it any favours if it don't keep drying out in between. So I'm going to have to have a ponder about that and just think about whether next year when we've got some better weather do i do it again i mean it looks ace from outside it's i was quite surprised apart from that business with the nails i did a really really good job and i would never done anything like that before so i was really quite pleased with myself and on my own getting up and down ladders and all that sort of stuff um but it might want attending to because i don't want this roof to start rotting through and it be a full roof job i mean it may be a case that i've got to strip strip it off maybe i don't know cut I don't know, cut the felt out perhaps uh, and maybe put a board over it and then refelt that perhaps but I mean it, it cost about it probably cost about 70 quid for all the equipment because there were two there were actually two things of nails because I had to go back and get another one 
kind of I didn't really realize how many I were going to need until I, I kind of cracked on with it uh, and there were two rolls of felt as well because I've got a piece kicking about here yeah I've got a nice long length of it there but sods law isn't it that flipping standard sized eight foot shed um, and you could only cut two and a bit lengths off it smart you know it makes you wonder if they've done that on purpose so yeah i've got a couple of um, lengths of it rolled up here that are kind of useless unless i put a, a joint in it which i didn't want to do either i wanted it to be full full strips but still still slightly failed hasn't it but anyway i suppose that's how you learn isn't it but yeah sometimes you, you just have to learn the hard way don't you because you know when you don't know this stuff and you know you do your due diligence and you're reading up online looking at youtube stuff like that and then you have a go at it um bit of a brave undertaking to start and have to finish kind of on my own but i'll know <laughs> it seems like an obvious thing but i'll know for next time that uh nail length quite important anyway i'll, I'll show you it real follow on about it Yeah, so it's uh, just a look at what I filmed just then and it looks looks good from outside um, it, Like I say, it might just literally be the amount of rain we've had and wind and it might be just driving up Perhaps because it's overlapped the right way and it's overlapped by a fair amount as well Well, I'm quite proud of it to be fair on the outside looks amazing um, Well, I mean amazing's a little bit of a let's let's you know, let's get real uh, <laughs> it's, it's a shed roof. So it, it might just be one of those things. It's just conditions really you know it's slightly extreme rain at the moment and it might not be anything to worry about i'll run it by james he knows a lot more about this kind of thing he's got even if he, he don't really he's got a lot more sort of common sense with practical things like this and he'll be able to come up with something i'm sure yeah i don't really want to be redoing it again though so soon better things to do I'm sorry really. anyway carry on oh do 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 greenhouse bits <laughs> there's another box of mixed crap oh dear sandwich in my shed I think I've just seen bubble wrap. There you go. Yes. I must admit, since going sort of like drama, 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 you know, there's all these little bits of stuff to sort out. It seems to have got done quite quick. Um. Yeah. Just I've just got to sort of label them up now and put them on the shelf. And I mean. That's the main little bits done, all the best that stuff's kind of big stuff that just wants reorganising into piles, you know, like loads of loads of compost bags. Uh, they're always really useful because I use them to line the raised beds and we do go and collect manure from a pal as well, so I always need some decent bags to hand. And we've got, I'll, I'll turn you so you can see, that one's to do. But that one's not so bad because a lot of stuff's kind of organised on there, even though it might not look it at a glance. Um, but there's just sort of like paint stuff, some bird foodie bits, some Claire foodie bits, uh, cutlery and a few like little soil amendments, you know, bag of lime, bag of ash from the fire pit. Um, so that's not actually a big deal, to be fair, it only really wants straightening up rather than you know sorting into bits of stuff not that much of a drama really 
in the end. I think we're about half past three though now in the afternoon so it's not going to be too long before it starts dropping a bit dark so I'm only going to get so much of it done today and I might have to pop back tomorrow. There's a, probably a good chance I'll still come up tomorrow. Um, it's just been having steady mornings with you know with it being Christmas break and whatnot and it's just the rain, the rain, the rain, the rain all the time. Um, which is why doing an inside job like this is decent but of course some stuff's getting sort of chucked outside so I don't really want anything out there for too long that's just going to get wrecked I mean I put my little box of bulbs outside and then I had to quickly shift it into the greenhouse because it was spitting again out there but yeah a good little job to do when it's raining and you can't do anything in the ground because it's just sludge and it's cold and you know it's winter all the rest of it <clears throat> saved chard uh, oh so much of it mega mega but yeah chard 2022 put in the rest of them i mean if you see on top of there that i was trying to be organized you know it were, it were in one spot with the seeds really there or thereabouts um, this here, this is um, handbag brassica mix, um, which is where you put a load of seeds in your handbag and think, oh, I'll take those to a plot and I'll uh, sow them, you know, like you do. Um, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later, you go in the bottom of your handbag and you go, why are there all these seeds? And they think, oh, yeah. And you don't know what's what, of course, because it's all mixed together. So, um, yeah, handbag brassicas there. So, you know, that's like... Micro green kind of mix now, I suppose, isn't it really? I think to be fair, a lot of it is going to probably turn out to be the, um, I think it's blue scotch curled kale. That's if I've remembered the name right, because I went to my little seed packet and was like, there's next to an oat in there and I've, I don't remember sowing any. So I've got a feeling that there's a lot of blue scotch kale, whatever it's called in there. <clears throat> old tights <laughs> now if you've if you follow allotment gardener on youtube he's not put out a video for i think nearly a couple of years now because i think he had a bit of a, a, a life change and moved house and various bits and stuff he did a video i'll see if i can put the link below and it were a few different uses for old tights on the allotment and some of them are absolute genius and i must say if you've not already seen any of his videos just go back i mean there's, there's a few years worth that you can watch um and they're just really funny oh, i find them really funny honestly i can watch all old ones again and they, they just make me chuckle it's just nice to you know pass the time sort of thing um so but one tip that he had for the tights which is why i brought them up to be fair is um you can put all your old pots inside one of the legs and tie a little knot and keep them for spring when you need them and it keeps all the critters out of them so that's what I'm going to go and do right now because yeah I knew there were a reason why I brought them up and then just promptly lost them. Yeah, so, stack of pots, old tights, let's see if I can actually um, thread this on now. <laughs> oh dear, I must be able to get this on. God, it's picking up speed is this wind again. I mean, I won't be needing these for a while, so they can sit in here quite happily. But yeah. Now they're all together, you know, when they fall over, they're not going to all just go everywhere. And bug free, tie a little knot in that so you can undo it again, hang it up. And you've even got yourself like a little plant pot dispenser as well. So yeah, brilliant job that. So I'm going to do other ones. Um, and then I think I'll be packing up and going home, to be fair, because, uh, like I say, I think it's probably not far off four-ish. Um, wind's picking up. It's just, yeah, it's a bit of a grim day. And more than likely, I'll be back tomorrow just to keep cracking on a little bit. But, yeah, um, 
for more tights tips allotment gardener on youtube so i'll see you again for finishing tidying the shed got my coffee where are you there yellow one is post uh, just can't think of a name of a chili <laughs> I explain that again because that was on it. Does that make any sense? It's like that saying, isn't it? Look after the pounds and the pennies. Or no.